Excellent. What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly Q&A video, which I am now gonna be calling Probing Paul, thanks to your valuable feedback. Uh, it's a title that I, I don't know, I'm okay with it. I'm warming up to it, I think, a little bit at a time. If you'll notice, there's kind of a blue glow reflecting down here. That's because I have just finished my video on the uh, Maximus 8 Formula motherboard from Asus, which is actually, I don't even know if I can lift this. It's actually running right now. It's plugged in and running. But I'm just, all right, I'll just, I'll just leave that there for, for now. Anyway, uh, if you guys wanna ask me questions for my monthly probing Paul Q&A video, uh, for next month, for example, you can post uh, comments in this video's comment section. That is where I got some of the uh, questions for this video. This is, uh, this is last month's right here. There's Kyle looking all young. I also noticed since it, it was titled Boxers or Briefs, there were some very interesting suggested videos over on the side. But anyway, I, I got a bunch of uh, questions from there. I asked on Twitter and I got several more from there. And I'm gonna try to run through these fairly quickly to give you guys um, answers to your, your questions. That's how this video is supposed to work. Anyway, um, just a, a, a representation of just one of the many requests to change the title of this series to Probing Paul, so thank you to everyone who suggested that and voted for that. Anyway, the first real actual question is from Tech Showdown, who also has a YouTube channel. You should check it out. He does tech reviews. Uh, what do you think of tech reviewers being bought out like game reviewers? And um, my answer to him immediately was, I think that's pretty pretty despicable. In particular, there was drama with like Machinima back in the day and, and that kind of thing. But um, it now apparently has happened with some tech reviewers as well. I don't know any of, of any specific specific situations where it's happened, but um, I would say as a, as a viewer of the content, you should definitely keep your eye out for some key things. One is, does the person reviewing the product disclose where they got the product from? Yes or no? Um, I always try to say, if I got a product like this motherboard here, Asus sent this over. You know, it's, it's just as simple as that as saying, here's where I got it from. And then two, of course, if they do say that, how is their actual reaction to the product? I try to do my absolute very best to re remain neutral and, and critical of the products that are sent over because they're sent for review. I'm supposed to critique them and give appropriate feedback for people who might actually be considering that product. Overly glowing reviews that don't disclose where the product came from is one thing. Uh, and then I'd say other reviewers who you look out for like, um, Tech Syndicate is an example. I'm wearing one of their shirts. And um, Logan has discussed that many times, like just not accepting review samples from anywhere, just to make sure that there's no possibility of, of bias or that kind of thing. As far as accepting money for review, that's straight up illegal. Um, I believe there are there are laws against that. If you, you can't like take money, say, here's a review of a product and say it's awesome. Um, you have to disclose where it came from. That's why I think uh, when LG sent out a lot of those uh, big ass 4K uh, uh, OLED TVs that they did at the end of, end of last year. They were very specific with all the reviewers that you have to disclose where this came from. So I think that's important and I think people are getting better at it, um, actually saying where stuff came from and that kind of thing. But um, thank you very much for the question and I hope that gives you an answer. Here's another one from Sam. Uh, he says, do you think AMD Polaris GPUs will match and or beat NVIDIA's Pascal GPUs? And if so, would you be excited to see the competition that once was between red and green? Uh, I would absolutely love to see more competition between red and green. I would actually like to see more competition from AMD on the CPU side against Intel, but NVIDIA could use a little kick in the pants as well. Uh, Radeon's been kind of hanging strong with them, but um, you know, they, they they're definitely not the fastest of the fast. It's really too early to speculate much, but uh, here's an article from yesterday that I thought was very interesting on this topic. Uh, this is testing DirectX 12. Uh, first off, they're, they're, this is from Gordon Ung, by the way, on PC, or PC World. Uh, first off, they're pairing up an NVIDIA and a Radeon GPU. He's using a 980 and a Fury X. And he's not trying to compare a 980 and a Fury X, but he does run several benchmarks. And uh, these were the sort of interesting things that I thought that, that I noticed when I was reading this article. One would be that uh, the, 980, the 980 and the Fury X did very well together. The two 980s without SLI uh, did better than with SLI on. So DirectX 12 using the 980s independently did a better job than the 980s just right out of the gate. And uh, although this article doesn't necessarily indicate it quite as much, a lot of the performance tests with DirectX 12, um, at least early tests, have shown that AMD is doing quite well. That compared with the um, power consumption demos that they were showing at CES, makes me really, really excited for this next generation Polaris based GPUs from AMD or from AMD's Radeon group. 
Um, that said, I think we're probably not going to see anything really exciting until probably about June around the Computex time frame because that's when I'm expecting to see stuff come out from both sides. But there's going to be tons of comparisons and all that good stuff. But yes, I would say I'm really hoping that they are and things are looking pretty good for it so far. And uh, thank you very much for that question. All right. Next, Hellbeast58 asks, Hey Paul, why don't you answer your comments? I noticed in this video you had 99 plus replies. Is it just too many or laziness? And and uh, he also says, much love. I love your tech videos as well as Kyle's. And um, I think actually what he is referring to here, if I can jump back to my boxers or briefs video. Actually, you know, this is the wrong account that I'm logged into here, but on, my, on the other account, which has the same picture, uh, it says 99 plus up there. I don't answer YouTube inquiries that come in. It's just too much. I get too many people asking me stuff from all directions, so Twitter is really where I focus on as far as actual replies to people. So to anyone who's ever tried to message me using the YouTube messaging system and I haven't replied, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to change what I'm doing and, and switch back either. Okay, next, Edward Green Jr. asks, My current keyboard is failing. I'm looking for a new one. Were there any from CES that caught your eye? He's looking for a full layout, mechanical RGB model. Uh, he wants a green theme, and most RGBs aren't green. Uh, he's looking at the Razer Black Widow Chroma Stealth, but he's not devoted to that brand. There's a lot of options. There's definitely a lot more options with mechanical RGB keyboards. I've tried a couple from G-Skill. I thought they were pretty decent. Uh, they're still fairly expensive, although there have been some price drops on them. Uh, and the software still needed a little bit of work. Corsair is definitely the go-to if you want RGB, LED, backlit, mechanical switches. They sell the most Cherry MX keyboards out of anyone. So, and they have a lot of different options as well. So definitely check out Corsair's lineup. Uh, I know Cooler Master has the uh, Master Keys that they were showing off at CES and that's supposed to launch sometime soon, I believe. So you might keep an eye out for that one as well. That's gonna have uh, I think a bit more minimal design than some of the Corsair ones and that kind of thing, but I really like uh, Cooler Master's take on a lot of the mechanical keyboards. This is a quick, this is a CM Storm Rapid Eye, Quick Fire Rapid Eye, um, which is 10 keyless, which which is just I don't know. They're built like trucks. And they do a really good job. If you're not a mechanical key switch aficionado then Black Widow's switches are okay for you. They use kale switches. If you're used to cherries and you switch to kales, you might not be as happy if you're used to cherries. But if you're starting off with kales, you'll probably be just fine. So those would be my suggestions for you right there. Okay, moving over to Twitter questions. This one's actually from last week, but I promised him I would reply to it. And this is in the same vein as that uh, AMD versus NVIDIA question. I've been trying to get your and Kyle's opinion on why you choose Intel processors over AMD for weeks. And I already replied to him just a little bit, and uh, it's basically roughly the same answer. Uh, AMD's processors right now are all based on very old architecture. Uh, Bulldozer and Piledriver, they have made iterative, iterative improvements and enhancements to them. But here's here's where it, I, I want to give a simple answer here, because really that's a, it's old. It's old, and they need to make new stuff. They haven't made inherently new stuff in quite some time on the CPU side. But let's put it this way. Whenever I get... AMD marketing material from the Radeon side, and they're showing benchmarks with AMD Radeon graphics cards, they use Intel platforms because they know that will give the best performance for their graphics card possible. I'm not saying you shouldn't use AMD for gaming system because for gaming systems, which don't need a lot of CPU horsepower or might need less, you can still get by with them just fine. And they're still kind of viable. But with the stuff they have plans coming out this year, it's hard to advocate buying into that platform right now. And um, yeah, I mean, it's straight from AMD themselves. They know, like, I mean, an 8350 doesn't even have native PCIe Gen 3 support. So that's kind of missing out a little bit too. Anyway, I hope that gives you a little bit more details. There's more I could go into there, like history of the company, some of the decision making that they did in like 2006 to the mid 2010s where they were like focusing on different things and switching between different CEOs and, and having different uh, goals for the company. And that's always hard to like kind of keep up with um, yeah, but anyway, that's probably hopefully enough explanation to that question. Next is a question from Dan. He says, where other than the U.S. would you like to live if you could choose? Um, Canada? I would probably say Canada just because it's easy. They speak English. I really like the Pacific Northwest, and that's even northier than the Pacific Northwest. I like big mountains. I like hiking. I like clean air. 
uh, all that good stuff. I've been, I've traveled other places that I might consider living, but um, I don't know. The places I've traveled in Asia, I wouldn't mind visiting for longer periods of time, but it's hard to see myself living there full time. And there's definitely places in Europe that I kind of like picture as I could live there, but I've never actually visited. I've only been to like Italy in Europe, so it's hard for me to say, yes, I'd move there. But uh, yeah, I'd say Canada is probably the easiest answer. And also probably might actually happen depending on how the political situation in the U.S. proceeds. But no, I don't want to get into politics. Okay, uh, Evil Sunbro asks, uh, is a full desktop GPU and a laptop truly practical? I have the 980M and it rocks at 1080. Um, well, like you said, for 1080, a 980M is just fine. But laptops are increasing their resolution. You see laptops that are like, uh, you know, 1440 resolution or even 4K resolution, which I think is a little bit silly, just just a little bit. Uh, and you do need more GPU horsepower to do that. I think NVIDIA kind of did it more as a statement piece to say, like, look how efficient our processors are, we were, or our GPUs are. We were able to put one into a laptop. Um, and there's always, there's always somebody who wants more power. So uh, practical, maybe a little bit less so than the mobile processors, but I think it makes sense with the power and the efficiency that the 980 has. For them to go ahead and do that. Um, all right, next is from Mark Chapman who asks, "What to look for when buying secondhand parts?" So just to, uh, I can give a few quick suggestions from my experience. First off, you want to look at parts that have a longer lifespan. So for me, uh, memory is definitely one of those since memory formats change in a much longer time scale. So I know we just switched to DDR4, but DDR4 should be the standard for quite some time. CPUs I find are very rarely fails. Um, however, they can get outdated. So I'm always on the fence about that. CPU, buying a CPU secondhand is usually a pretty safe bet though. Beyond that, there's always the go-to components that have a really long lifespan, like a case or maybe a power supply. Um, a mechanical hard drive is something that I would not buy secondhand because you never know how much use it's actually been put through and mechanical hard drives have a limited lifespan. So I definitely not look for that. Last thing would be to double check who you're buying it from, like you know, the massive eBay re resellers that just get lots of like you know damaged parts and and you know sort through them and resell stuff. They know what stuff's worth, so you're not going to get as good of a deal buying from an individual or somebody who like you know has an old system and just wants to get rid of it. That's probably where you're going to get the most bang for your buck buying secondhand. Okay, next up is a question from Zach, who says, "Now that it's pretty much done, what are your favorite or most helpful parts of your garage setup?" And Zach, I'm I'm flattered that you think I'm almost done, but I really do have quite a bit more work. But I, I'm really happy with these shelves up here. Um, just the fact that I have some more storage that I can just like pop some stuff up there and it's really easily accessible. That's really the main thing for me though, is making things accessible. I, I want, like if I'm sitting here and I'm like, I need this piece to do this thing and I know I have it, I don't have to go to a big pile and dig through the pile. I want to be able to go to like a nice little drawer or a shelf or something where I know stuff is. And that's kind of been the biggest benefit for me so far is just being more organized so I can be more efficient as I move through making videos every day. Uh, next from Angelo, I, I like this question. How many AOL free trials did you use back in the day? And the answer would be as many as my dad had credit cards, which I think ended up being like six or seven times I went through the AOL free trial um, because if you tried to use the same credit card after your month expired or whatever, it wouldn't let you redo it. But if you used a different credit card, even if you had like the same IP and everything, it would still <laughs> let you do it. So yeah, I did, I think, I'm pretty sure I did five or six AOL free trials using different credit cards before finally like my dad or my parents were like, all right, we're just going to pay the monthly subscription fee for AOL. Uh, lastly from Ronin. Uh, he asks, what made you decide to start YouTube full-time as opposed to keeping a full-time job and YouTube on the side? Uh, that is a good question. There's lots of factors that went into it, and I can't really delve into all of them. Um, but I would say Kyle had something to do with it because it was his idea first, and he was kind of talking about it, and then I was like, yeah, maybe I could do that too. Second is I really like being independent and kind of calling my own shots and being able to just have an idea for a video and, and go ahead and make it. I also really like being able to be more critical about stuff, um, to kind of like dig into the, the shadier, I don't wanna call it shadier, but just certain things like, I could never have made my Windows 10 for $20 video working at Newegg. They, they would not have been happy with me about that. Um, so yeah, I like the freedom and, and I really like the, um, the um, I mean, this isn't something that made me do it, but something after the fact was just the amount of feedback I got from people watching the channel as far as the content I was making and, and, and all that over the past couple of years has been amazing. So um, yeah, it was all those together. 
And then, no, there's two other things. One would be that my subscriber rate had gotten up to a pretty, it was significant enough that I felt if I put my effort into it full time that I could make a living off of it. And um, also my wife has a full time job and she has health insurance. And she said, you know what, I will add you to my health insurance and you can work from home and I'm cool. You know, if, if there's any financial difficulties or whatever, she, she was okay to help me out with that. So that, probably more than anything, was my biggest contributing factor to me saying like, yes, I can do this. And I'm really, really glad that I did. So anyway, that's all the questions I have for today though. So guys, again, leave me more questions down in the uh, comment section down below if you want to. Uh, don't forget to do all of the things that I usually tell you to do at the end of the video, like uh, check out my store where you can buy shirts, mugs, and glasses. Uh, check out my Amazon links, um, click them before you buy stuff. That's always really helpful. Uh, if nothing, maybe hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for Saturday when I've got this Maximus 8 uh, formula. It's going to be a pretty, it's a pretty thorough review, I hope. I think you guys will like it. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.